Hello friends, um, Scott Novus here, and what this is a video I've been reluctant to make for a long time, but after um, sharing information with a number of users, I thought I really need to do this and bite the bullet. Um, and so here's the deal. What I want to share with you is the real way that I work with this Obsidian um, second brain every day. And the real reason I got into Obsidian wasn't to be more productive. It wasn't to do projects and areas and all that stuff. The real reason I got into it was because 10 years ago, uh, almost uh, 12 years ago, I was um, had a horrible family vacation. Um, everybody else was fine. I was the problem. Um, work was stressing me out of my gourd. Being an entrepreneur is extremely challenging. And I just, it was the, the year before I joined the entrepreneurs organization and I just didn't have the tools to deal with everything I was dealing with. And I wanted to get better. Um, and I started down the path of self-improvement, um, you know, listen to classics from Zig Ziglar, uh, Jack Canfield. And, um, I just got into that process of, okay, let me learn, let me learn, how can I get better? And what I noticed was that I was beginning to absorb a lot of content, but I wasn't applying very much. And I was afraid that I was turning into learning as entertainment and it wasn't really helping me progress. And I wanted a better way of managing and tracking and integrating what I was learning. And that was in 2017, um, uh, uh, Zanke Ahrens, Ahrens, Zanke Ahrens published a book called Taking Smarter Notes. Um, I, in 2018, came across that book. So five years into my self-improvement journey and five great years into EO, or seven years, however you do the math, um, I thought, oh, wow, this matters. Uh, this could make a big difference. And up until that point, all the way through college, I'd been a huge note taker. And my theory on notes was that if something went in my ear and out my fingers onto a piece of paper, I was going to remember it. And so I have reams and reams and reams of notebooks that are filled with notes from talks, learning sessions, ideas, just like boxes of um, amazing notebooks um, that I literally have in boxes over here. But I never, ever went back and looked at anything. I never cross-referenced anything. I never used it again. I just chewed up a lot of ink and paper. And the idea that I could actually play with my ideas, that I could do something more productive with my ideas really appealed to me. And that's what started me on this path of building a new kind of note-taking system instead of one where it was just me dumping stuff into something I never looked at. It was really about me creating links and associations the way the brain does is that I was beginning to work with information in a completely new way. So for me, it all started with learning. The productivity systems were add-ons. They came later. Um, so I'm going to go back to the beginning and what I use absolutely the most. Um, I'll create separate videos to show you how all these pieces work, but I'm just going to give you a run through of what, like, what my literal daily routine is when I'm reading and absorbing content. So um, part one, where do I begin? Um, I'm a huge Kindle fan, so I will buy a book um, on Kindle um, and I will, oops, let me make sure that I'm actually interacting with my software. Um, and so I'll take a book like, let's say, Book Yourself Solid, and you can see there's a little, um, right, there's that little headphone. I'll buy the Kindle book, and I will get the audio book to go with it. Why? So that I'm listening to the audio book while it's playing, um, and then when something really interesting happens, I will pause the audio book. Um, let's take a look at this book, Platform, um, and what you'll see is, boy, something, he's got a list, love lists. Um, you know, how do you create a better uh, about page? So he's like, okay, here's your tips. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna highlight that. And then I'll go back and let him play. And if he comes up with another idea, I'll let him continue to go. So I'm absorbing and I'm highlighting, and I can do that on the go. I can do it while I'm walking the dogs, 
um, frequently if I'm in line. It's it's about the simplest way for me to grab information and hook it. So one of my top ways of consuming information is through audiobooks um, with the Kindle beside it so that I can get that text and the content that's associated with it. Why does that matter? Because all of my Kindle highlights, I use an application called Readwise. There's other ones out there. Omnivore is a pretty popular open source one that allow me to import all of my highlights off Kindle into another usable form. And you can see there's 363 books worth of highlights. It's over 15,000 highlights. And you can see right there is platform by Michael Hyatt is the highlights that I've made in the book. Now, I don't know if the most recent one is in there yet. Uh, let's take a quick look. Um, but it just tells me uh, there's another feature they have about resurfacing highlights, and I'll go into that later. But the idea is if I listen to it, I highlight it, then what's really, really cool is when I come back to Obsidian, in my I have a Readwise folder, and in the Readwise folder, it will export all the highlights from all of my books. And so let's see if, yep, there it is, platform made it in there. And so what it does is it gives me a little bit of short information and then it gives me the highlights. They're automatically imported right into my system. Now, what do I do with that? Well, I'm a bit of a nudge um, or I'm a detail learning my own way. The details I care about, I will go to great lengths to protect. The ones I don't care about, sorry. Um, so one of the things that I do is I use another application called Zotero, and it is a bibliography tool. Why do you want that? In a world of fake news and people making up stuff, it is super important to me to be able to cite my sources. I want to know where I learned it. And so one of the things I use is a plugin that comes with uh, Zotero that's compatible that lets me go to Amazon because you can see there's some information here, but not all the information about that book. And so what I'll do is I'll go to amazon.com ta-da. And up here is a little plugin you can get. It's the Zotero book plugin. So let's go to platform, um, the book, and see if it, uh, there it is. Okay. I will click on Kindle. And now if you look at this little um, icon up here, once it turns blue, it has grabbed all the information about this book and it is ready to put into Zotero. And so if I pop into Zotero, that book is not in here yet, so let's grab it. So I'll come over here. It will say, hey, do you want it to be a book? Um, absolutely, it's not an article. I have a whole separate database for web articles, and now that I have grabbed that book, there it is. One more plugin. This might seem like a lot of work, but I only have to do this stuff one time and then I have it forever. There's a neat little plugin called MD Note. It will take that information about this book and it will allow me to export it into my library. Remember, I said an Obsidian note base, second brain, is just text files on your hard drive. So all I have to do is save that file. Now I've got all that information pulled out. I didn't have to do any cutting, copy and pasting. And if I pull this forward, pull it up, uh, I can say platform. Now I have library. Here's the information pulled in from Zotero with links to my bibliography. And it includes a little bit of additional information. Um, I'm gonna tell you there's a couple other things I do. I clean up. Um, the title, so it's easier for me to reference. I will create a alias um, using a macro called uh, book alias. So it says book in the name, and you're gonna see I'm gonna use that in a second. Um, this last little bit, I've got some other macros. So I can put in my own book meta, 
And that means what format do I own this book? I have it in Kindle, I have it in Audible. So within Obsidian, I can pull up my entire library of what is that book in and where is it at. And one of the things I like to do, because if I'm gonna share a book with somebody, I'm gonna refer up to them, I want them to be able to get access to the book. Um, and so I will grab a copy of the link directly to that Kindle book. Um, and then I will save it here. Um, and then I can write, I give myself some tags. It's about speaking and business. Um, and, and that's pretty good. And I'll come back and rate it later. Oh, one other small thing I will do is I will link it to its um, Readwise highlights so that they're cross-linked. So now they're all connected. So what do I do with that? How does that work? Well, one of the things that I would do is, since this for me has to do about speaking um, and building up my speaking thing, um, in my speaking area, you put this wherever you want. This is how I use it is I'll talk about resources. So one of the resources will be platform book notes. Okay, so I'm gonna have book notes on this book and I'm gonna use another macro. Sorry, I just have tons of these things. And it's, I'm gonna take a selection and I wanna make a new link note out of it. And it's the beginning of a thought train. So it's a start card. Click on it and boom, I have a perfectly formatted note that links back to what I was talking about. So one of the ideas of the way I link notes is it's one idea per note. Um, that creates sort of more atomic ideas and it's easier to cross link things when it's not just some giant blob of text. Um, I'm gonna put in my overview, what is this book about? This book is about um, building up your social media uh, following, your, your platform. Um, sounds great. And now what I would, I tend to do is sometimes I can't always remember this stuff is I'll go back and, uh, remember the author, Michael Hyatt. Okay. Um, this book was written by, uh, Michael Hyatt. Okay. Ah, that's because I am misspelling his name constantly. Uh, there he is. I just saw him. There we go. Michael Hyatt in the pop-up list. Um, the book platform. So I do it this way because it immediately identifies what kind of resource it is. So I put it in this way deliberately when I'm linking content is I like to write it into the sentences um, so that the information isn't like some odd thing off to the side or footnotes I have to go look at. It's embedded in the, the notes I'm giving my future self. I'm writing notes to my future self that if I have to come back and look at this, um, uh, was recommended by um, Kindle uh, Suggestions. Where did I get it from? Now, one of the other things manually I could do is I could say executive summary. I'm not there yet because I'm not finished with the book, but in the executive summary, one of the things I'll often do is put in like, what was my number one takeaway out of this book? What is one of the things that I, that I wanted to get? And now that I have this sort of book note, as I'm reading, um, I'm often going back maybe in the evening or maybe later in the week and I'll grab the highlights um, from the highlight page, and I can also connect it here. So I can put in platform from Readwise. Um, and I've got just all the assets relative to this idea are at my fingertips. And this particular book, um, what I would probably end up doing is if I, I started thinking about it, I would think, what else is like it? Um, and so one of those associations is um, I've been doing a lot of work on storytelling. And so what I might be able to do is connect to um, books like uh, Storyworthy. Uh, great book. Um, and again, um, I can't remember. Matthew Dix, that's the author. So I go back. Um, 
Okay. Um, uh, and there's more, but okay. So what you've seen now is a whole bunch of stuff, right? You've seen, I, let me recap this. I'm listening on audible, a highlight on Kindle. Um, once I pick up a book, Whenever I need to do it, maybe not right away, like you just saw, when I get to Obsidian, I will then create um, the library link for that book. So it's in my library. Um, and then I'll start my own book notes page about that book. And Readwise will automatically take any highlights I have and import them into Obsidian for me. So when I use the metaphor of a kitchen, what I'm trying to have is all the ingredients for me to think about and make notes about this book are at my fingertips. Why do I want that? Because the best way I have found to really learn and work with ideas is the Feynman summary technique. I'm going to write and resummarize for my own benefit what I'm learning from this book. And it will give me the clarity of which practices or habits I want to take away from this book so that I get at least one nugget. If I'm gonna invest time to listen to and read a book, I want to make darn sure I get a takeaway. And the more I connect ideas, the more I um, work with ideas that way, I find I put more of those ideas into practice. So the number one reason I use Obsidian, the number one reason I use it this way, is that it is about improving my knowledge and comprehension of topics that are going to make my life better. And that's not just my life personally, but the lives of the people around me, making them better. And uh, I'll show you a more mature note. Um, so let's take a look at Wonder Drug Book Notes. Um, this is a more mature note that I had done last January. Um, and right away, I was like, hey, this is super tightly linked with another book uh, called Positivity by Barbara Friedrichson. So... I immediately have a connection. And if I went to that book, it would backlink into this one. So I could see how the ideas reciprocate with each other. Um, I wrote my summary. I came up with my key takeaway. And I really highlighted this, you know, like for me, <laughs> give a shit, but become the live to giver. Um, I copy the table of contents out of the Kindle and drop it in here. So it's easy for me to navigate. But one of the things that I frequently do is this idea of next card. This is an idea. Here's the summary of the book. When I start breaking it down into little atomic pieces, I will then create a new note about just this idea. And so these are the notes I have on how to put into practice becoming a live to giver. And sure enough, you can see here's another great book that's associated, David Brooks, How to Know a Person. Man, if you're going to really make a difference in people's lives, getting to know them is an integral part. These two ideas complement each other. So guess what I've done? I've blended them together. I'm not just practicing helping others. I'm also practicing getting to know them better so I could be more effective when I help them. Those two ideas dovetail together for me. This is how I use this system. So exactly the mechanics of the macros, exactly where they're at. How all the plugins work, I'll go through each of those in separate videos so it's not so totally overwhelming. But what you're looking at is the real reason I got into using a second brain. And what I discovered is that when I have all the information in one place, it became logical to use that same set of tools to manage my projects, to manage the areas of my life where I have my heart rolls. Where do I want to show up and how do I want to show up and who do I want to show up for? Um, and really, this is what the resources are. This is like all the other information that's in my life that I'm like, oh, I might as well stick it here because this is the best tool I've ever found for keeping and holding information that I'm actually going to do something with and revisit and connect with and reuse. So what it's really done for me is it's 10x the value of any book I read, any learning event I go to. Um, or any seminar I take. It has been hugely effective for me, and I hope it could be hugely effective for you.